Good morning. Welcome to our very frigid Friday morning, early morning intuitive guidance. I'm Dr. Bonnie Nussbaum, America's kick-ass coach and psychologist, here with some words for us to ponder today. And I want to do a shout out to my dad who is 88 today. So I think I'm going to be making him rice pudding and chocolate chip cookies. Can you tell what food group he likes the best? <laughs> So, we are going to tackle one last little chunk in the content part of taking the war out of our words, the art of powerful non-defensive communication. Good morning to whomever is here. I'm thinking it might be Cindy. We'll see. By Sharon Ellison. Yep, it's Cindy. Good morning, good morning. Um, this lat We have one last little section to do on the content part of things. Good morning, Carolyn. Welcome. Um, and... Then we're gonna be shifting to process, which is my favorite part of things, because I like to analyze what's happening, not just the, the topic we're talking about, but how we're talking about it. So our last little section for this part on content is starts on page 116, and it's questions about value, emotions, reason, and behavior, V-E-R-B, verb. <laughs> so let's just take a couple of nice deep breaths. Still thawing out from having taken the dog out. Good morning, Beth. <sighs> Windy and cold, but not very much precipitation here. I think south of us probably got more, but we'll, we'll see how this day unfolds. So, questions about value, emotion, reason, and behavior. When we ask questions about what a word or phrase means, we uncover the person's blueprint for the structure of that word how it subsequently both dictates and reflects that person's reality. Much of a word's meaning and how we experience life in relationship to that word comes from the elements we have attached to it. These include what I call verb elements, values, emotions, reasoning, and behavior. And then there's a little table here. Good morning, Judy. Glad you're here. Little table here that lists those four and lists the focus of the question you're going to ask to discern about these four things. So with regard to the element of value, you're focusing on what someone believes. So value is belief. With regard to the element of emotion, you're focusing on what someone feels. With regard to reasoning, it's what someone thinks. And with regard to behavior, it's what someone does. So it's value is beliefs, emotion is feelings, reasoning is think your thoughts, and behavior is what they do. So she starts us out by dealing with one of these elements at a time, but then she's going to uh, move us into applying actually all four elements to the same topic at the same time. So hold on to your butts. Here we go. Asking about a single verb element. We can ask one question focusing on what a person believes, feels, thinks, or does and gain valuable information that may transform the conversation. The following questions are based on examples previously discussed. Value. The question could be, what do you believe it means I don't care about you if I don't call? Do you believe it means I don't care about you if I don't call? So belief, what is the belief? With regard to emotion, how do you feel when I come home late on a night when it's my turn to make dinner? How do you feel? Reasoning, do you think I do not need to know about the tires I am buying? Do you think? And behavior, what did you say to the man who was blocking the driveway? So in other words, the behavior, what did you do? Okay, even when people are arguing a point, if asked directly and non-defensively about what they think, believe, feel, or do, they may stop arguing, shift their position, and answer more genuinely. Once, when I was working with a classroom full of teenagers, one boy talked about getting picked up by the police and being harassed by other people for no reason. That was no reason. A girl in the class, knowing that his clothes identified him as a gang member, insisted if you're going to wear those clothes, man, you're going to get hassled. I used to, then I changed how I dress, and now I don't. The young man replied, that doesn't have anything to do with it, and they argued for a minute. 
I then requested that the girl ask the boy what he believed instead of just trying to convince him to agree with her. She asked, Do you believe what you wear makes a difference in how you get treated? He responded, Yes. His response was immediate and straightforward, surpassing, surpassing even a reluctant, well, maybe. At 14 years of age, before an audience of 30 peers, he was willing to shift his position dramatically and give an honest answer when asked a question about what he believed. And again, our challenge here is going to be figuring out how to formulate the question. So here's one where applying all four verb questions, values, emotion, reasoning, and behavior to the same issue. When we ask about a person's values, emotion, reasoning, and behavior regarding the same issue, we can acquire an even greater wealth of information. Jamila, who was divorced, had an ongoing argument with her father, who was a minister. He kept insisting that she needed to find a second husband. A professor at the university that Jamila attended had taken a PNDC workshop and helped her think of some questions to ask her father. Her first question was, Dad, why do you believe that I should get married again? So there's the belief part, the value thing. So Mahogany, her three-year-old daughter, can have a daddy, he replied. His belief was that his granddaughter needed a father. Then she asked, what are you afraid will happen if I don't get married? So this is the emotion part of it. He was fearful that Mahogany wouldn't have a good role model if Jamila didn't get married. Jamila asked him, do you think that I have to be married for her to have a good male role model? Yes, he said, especially since you are so far away from me and your brothers. So his reasoning was, that's the third one, that Jamila must get married to provide this for her daughter if she lived away from her hometown. Then she asked, would you like to know what I do to make sure she has good male role models? Surprised, he answered that he would. Jamila then shared with him that she had close male and female friends who spent a lot of time with her in Mahogany. She had been careful to make sure her daughter had not only good male models, but an extended family. Father and daughter had never gotten to that point of discussion in the two years since her divorce because they had been stuck on point one, arguing about whether or not she should get married again. Furthermore, she had always assumed that his refrain about marriage was simply a tired moral argument with no genuine concern behind it. As an outgrowth of her questions, she understood more of his concerns and fears, he understood more of her way of life, and their relationship changed. Both father and daughter developed increasing acceptance and respect for each other's views. So again, it might be Many of you are going to, again, have opportunities over the holidays. Pick something. If there's a particular topic that always lights you up like a Christmas tree, politics, religion, how you ought to raise your kids, whatever it is, maybe think of that person who tends to poke that button and go through those four questions. What would be a values question? What that person believes? How could you... Tell me what you believe about that. You, you've said this comment to me often. Tell me what you believe about that. Emotions. What do they feel about that? Tell me what your feelings are about that. I want to understand where you're coming from. Because we've had this, you've said this to me for years now, and I want to understand it better. Okay? Reasoning. What do they think? What are your thoughts on this? You know, so you're just, you just continue to ask the questions and behavior. What do they do about it? You know, maybe there's other things they do about it beyond just bringing it up to you every Christmas. Maybe over the course of the year, they have conversations with your siblings about it or your parents about it or whatever. So asking those questions can gather a whole lot more information so that you have a bigger picture of what's going on there really. Now, can it be possible that someone's just being nosy in, in your business? Yes. <laughs> but clarifying that can be real helpful also. Because you then can put some context around that too. 
let's say it's this kind of a, you need a good daughter for your, or you need a good role model for your daughter. Um, and it's someone who's been divorced three times. They've got some history there that's going to influence why they're saying what they're saying. Could be interesting to have a conversation about that history so that you understand where they're coming from. And you can differentiate, yes, that is her history, his history, whatever, not my history, not my history. It's getting applied to me in these comments, but it's not my history, okay? So this little part here kind of recaptures all of the different options we have for content questions, all right? And then when, when it's time for us to move forward with the book again, then we'll be hitting some of the process questions, the how we do this, not what we're doing, okay? So content questions. There's 10 different things that we learned to use, and this is just a little review of them. So the first one is the who, what, when, where, why, and how, getting the details regarding a situation or a person's reactions. Again, um, the caveat being leave the why questions for the end, if you're gonna use them at all. Try the others, try the others. Who, what, when, where, how. Use those instead. Good morning, Cheryl. We're just doing a review of the content stuff that we've already gone through um, in taking the war out of our words. And then next time we use the book again, we'll be moving on to the process stuff. So the first one is the who, what, when, where, how, and last ditch effort, why. Second one is inverting, turning the person's statement into a question. So if they say something like, um, all men are jerks, Flipping that around, do you believe all men are jerks? You're asking the question, well, no, not all men, just this guy who cut me off in traffic, whatever, whatever. Third one is, what do you mean? So you're asking for clarification about the meaning of a particular word or phrase. Um, so if someone says today, oh man, it's frigid out there, well, what do you mean by frigid? It could be, well, the wind is blowing, or the temperature's really low, or the wind chill factor is a huge thing or whatever aspect of that they're picking up on. But you just want to practice and you can start with mundane things like that, like a conversation about the weather. Practice your skills on things that aren't fraught with difficulty. That's a great way to practice. Fourth one is assumptions. Asking the other person directly about your assumptions about what they mean. So it could be, well, I'm thinking you might mean A or B. Is it one of those two? You know, or I'm thinking by frigid, you mean the temperature. Am I right? Asking about your assumptions about what they've said. Number five is quantity. Asking for clarifications about words that describe amounts, percentages, degrees. You always cut me off in conversation. Asking the question, tell me about always. Well, it's not always, but it's frequent. <laughs> and, and when they change the word, always, never, those, those end point kind of words, when they change the word, the emotions re re respond accordingly. So it's harder to be as angry or frustrated when you say, you frequently cut me off, than you always cut me off. Number six is compare and contrast asking questions about opposites, variations, exceptions. So if someone says, all men are jerks, asking about the opposite. Well, are there any women who are jerks? Are there any men who are decent? Gets them correcting that, again, that end of the continuum kind of statement they've just made. Number seven, contradictions. Asking about any contradictions in what the person has said. So. Um, let's say someone says, I'm exhausted. Now I'm going to go out and shovel the driveway. Okay, I'm confused. You're telling me you're exhausted, but you're going to go out and shovel the driveway. How do those two fit together? Getting the person to actually look at the contradiction they've put in there. Good morning, Gail. Welcome, welcome. Glad you are here. I got to go back and look and see if you posted cookie pictures. I want to see what you got. <laughs> Number eight is past, present, and future asking questions related to time factors. So again, many of us tend to live from our history. If we've had, let's say we've had bad experiences with people from a particular church in our community. And so we 
um, make a statement about that in the present. Ah, good, awesome, awesome. Merry Christmas to you too. Um, we can, someone can ask questions about that. Well, the, I know that that happened to you in the past. Has that something like that happened more recently? Well, no. Well, do you think maybe some of the people in that church could have changed their tune in the interim? Trying to help the person move through the using the history in the present time. Number nine, first, second, and third person questions. Asking basically the same question with a focus on different subjects. Me, you, them, in order to gain perspective from different angles. So again, all men are jerks. If you're a man, you can say, do you see me as a jerk? If the person you're talking to is a man, do you see yourself as a jerk? Do you see all men as jerks? So first, second, and third perspective, uh, person perspective. And then the one we did today, number 10, value, emotion, reason, behavior, verb questions. Asking about what a person believes, feels, thinks, and does. So again, lots of opportunities for us to practice with the holidays. Again, I encourage you to practice a particular tool on a conversation that isn't a big hairy deal um, so you can get some practice under your belt before tackling one of the ones that tends to heat things up in conversation. But a lot of different tools there that we can make use of that can be helpful. I actually had a success story with this yesterday. My sister and I were talking about an aspect of one of the houses that we're flipping right now. And we could both feel the escalation beginning. And we were able to um, reframe some things using some of these tools to ratchet it back down. And by the end of the conversation, instead of us being here, we had aligned. We were beside each other working on this issue. So cool to practice this stuff, cool when it works so well, etc. Even cool when it doesn't work very well. Practice. Go for it. Because again, people are going to expect you to respond in the same way that you've always responded. And when you do something different, it throws them off a little bit. And sometimes it throws them off and they make a change toward the positive. And sometimes it throws them off and they redouble their efforts to try to get the old response out of you. Hang with it. Hang with it. We can do this. So have an awesome Friday. We'll see you again tomorrow. Remember, you're capable of far more than you think you are. Stay warm. Bye-bye.